Hello, um, my name is Aaron Berryman, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about Helene Sixu and um, the rhetoric that can be found in one of her most famous works um, called The Laugh of the Medusa. So first, a little bit of backstory about Helene Sixu. Um, she was born in 1937 to Jewish parents in Algeria. Um, in Oman. Now, um, and at the time, Algeria was a French colony, so technically she is considered French. Um, her dad spoke Spanish um, and her mom spoke German. And then while she was growing up, her dad also taught her um, Hebrew and Arabic. Um, and then on top of those languages, um, in school, she became fluent in English and in French. So she, she knows a lot of languages um, and she has this really, you know, multifaceted um, kind of cultural um, and racial and, and, and linguistic um, identity um, that really helped kind of shape her childhood, I think. Um, she also grew up um, in Algeria going to a school that separated the kids. They would separate um, the Jewish children from the non-Jewish children and they weren't allowed to learn together um, or, or to be together. Um, so I think from a very, very young age, um, Sixu was, was beginning to see these power dynamics and these relationships between genders and between, you know, the classes and between races. Um, and she was shown what it's like to be, you know, not at the top of the food chain, um, socially speaking, or, or class, you know, speaking of classes. Um, and I think that really helped um, kind of shape the way she saw the world um, that's later mirrored in her, in her work. Um, so let's just jump right into The Laugh of the Medusa. This is probably known as one of her most popular works. Um, most people probably know this one. It was originally written in French um, and then translated to English. Um, it's a very rich text. Um, she talks about a lot of different things in The Laugh of the Medusa. But um, if I had to boil it all down to just some key messages, I would say that this is um, a call to arms of, of sorts for women. Um, she's, she's urging women to, to communicate and to speak up for themselves um, and to write. She urges women to write endlessly and, and constantly and to write themselves into history. Um, there, there's a quote I really wanted to read. Um, she says, that this is a locus where the repression of women, uh, she's talking about like writing, like the genre of writing um, and how it's dominated by men, not a very pleasant place for women writers to be in at the time. So she says that this is a locus where the repression of women has been perpetuated over and over, more or less consciously, and in a manner that's frightening since it's often hidden or adorned with the mystifying charms of fiction. That this locus has grossly exaggerated all the signs of sexual opposition, where woman has never her turn to speak. This being all the more serious and unpardonable in that writing is precisely the very possibility of change, the space that can serve as a springboard for a subversive thought, the precursory movement of a transformation of social and cultural structures. So she's basically saying, why the hell aren't women in writing? Because writing is exactly what's going to change the world, what's going to shape um, viewpoints and opinions. And if women aren't putting their two cents in and, and getting out there, then they're not going to be part of history. Um, she wants women to speak up for themselves and urges them to, to take control of their own lives, um, fight the patriarchy. Um, I think this is also a perfect um, place to point out that this text, 100% through and through, is performative. Um, she is urging women to speak for themselves and to write themselves into history um, and to embrace their sexuality. And that's exactly what she does in this text. She writes, she, she writes about her femininity and sexual, um, you know, ethos. And um, she's doing exactly what she's urging other women to do. So I think that's pretty cool. Sixu is also urging women to reclaim their bodies and kind of take control of their feminine sexuality. 
I, I don't think it's a secret that um, in the past, women's sexuality has been, you know, very like repressed and dragged through the mud. Um, <clears throat> women were often made to feel really dirty about normal things like their body or birth or masturbation um, that they shouldn't have felt guilty for, but society really, you know, um, ostracized them for or punished them for. Um, there's a quote here that um, Sixu um, directly correlates writing with um, the woman's body and um, female masturbation and being able to um, to express yourself. She says, and she's talking to women here. She says, and why don't you write? Write. Writing is for you and you are for you. Your body is yours. Take it. I know why you haven't written, because writing is at once too high, too great for you. It's reserved for the great, that is, for great men, and it's silly. Besides, you've written a little, but in secret, and it wasn't good because it was in secret, and because you punished yourself for writing because you didn't go all the way, or because you wrote irresistibly, as when we would masturbate in secret, not to go further, but to attenuate the tension a bit, just enough to take the edge off. And then, as soon as we come, we go and make ourselves feel guilty, so as to be forgiven, or to forget, or to bury it until the next time. Now, I know Sixu's wording might be a little bit sexually scandalous to some ears, but the message behind it is still very, very clear. Um, she's arguing that just as women at the time were made to feel really guilty and inferior about their sexuality and about their bodies um, and masturbation, they were also made to feel inferior in their thoughts and in their words. Um, and oftentimes they were silenced. Um, she argues that a society that is censoring women's bodies um, is also censoring women's thoughts and their minds. Um, and, and, and she really wants to break out of this. Um, this this text is is so rich she talks about so many different things in here um, that i'd love to talk a little bit more about um some of them she talks about a woman's right to choose motherhood and not have it pushed on her from society she talks about um, sexism in the home and in family um, and she talks about you know the unique love that women can have for each other non-sexual but um, a sort of um, sisterly or, or womanly love for one another um, that I think is 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 truly beautiful. Um, so there were um, a couple of key messages in the Lack of the Medusa that I talked about. Um, and I think these key messages really show how Sixu uses rhetoric to inspire and to, you know, um, to really break through to, um, to women at the time um, and talk directly to them. Um, so thank you so much for listening to me. Um, I had fun talking about um, Helene Sixu with you. Um, and thank you.